everybody. Welcome Whoa. to Geek Storm. I'm Sean Hilton, owner of Comics Cube, founder of the Kokomo Con. And today we are in our, I don't know how many years of doing Geek Storm, but many. gosh darn it, we're in that year. So welcome to the show. I'm joined today by my oldest friend in the world, Michael Allen Harrison. I don't want you to get my, my middle name anymore. Mike, can you go back through all the previous shows and re -ri No. You can't even put them on a podcast or something. <laughs> Not that anybody would give a damn. People, but. we're popular. No. People come up to me on the street every no. day. Hey, aren't you Sean? I'm like, no, and I smash him in the face. I, it's funny, I've never had any, okay. Yeah, hey, you won't ever have anybody come to you and say, are you Mike? <laughs> no, it's not gonna happen. Because they'll do the likable one. No, no, they might say, hey, is Mike behind you? Something yeah, like she that. marked the tires <laughs> in already. She's on it today. We turned the thing around, you see the people. I did. Hey, Speaking of which, where are we? We're at oh my the goodness. finest toy store in the entire United States of America. Kokomo Toys and Collectibles, <laughs> located at 111 East Sycamore, Kokomo, Indiana. Are you okay, buddy? You okay? Don't do that. <laughs> you need a doctor? <laughs> Something I can help with? <laughs> Can't have you die on the show. You threw that merrick at me and I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> sure, go ahead, fan base, got it, oh. go. <laughs> Kokomo Toys and Collectibles, the finest toy store in all of America. You can find us right here. They are open Wednesday through <laughs> Saturday from noon till five. They want to buy your stuff. Oh man. Doesn't matter what it is, if it's a toy, they want to look at it. They want to offer you money. You got comic books, bring them on down to Comics Cube, located at 121 East Sycamore, like three doors down. Honestly, if you can't walk that distance carrying a heavy bundle and not get, uh, you know, get a little uh, vapors. You need to. You need to get. You need to get a workout. Sure. So, but I want to buy your comics. We got people to buy your games. We got people who want to buy your records. We got people who want to buy your books. You know, we've got a lunch pail and it's got some. You know, it's got leftover lunch in it. We want to look at that. We we can discuss some things. So. So you got stuff in your house. It. Yeah. And let's say this is your stuff. That's your stuff. Okay, but this guy wants to give you money for your stuff. I do. This stuff has been sitting there. As a matter of fact, you forgot you even had it's it. It's dusty. Okay. You got to give it to your kids. You got to leave it for your grandkids. They don't want it. Heck with those kids. Okay, all they want to do is come over for the five dollar card on their birth on your birthday or whatever on Christmas. That's it. Is it still five dollars? You're cheap. Wow. Why well, really used to get five dollars? Is what I used to get. Because you're old. Oh. Well, anyway, so come in and exchange those things for those things. Get it all the time at, at these places. We just bought a collection I shouldn't have bought yesterday for five hundred dollars. No, another one. I really did. I shouldn't have bought it. Dude, really, it wasn't very good. But it had like one book in it, and I'm like, eh, it's like a two hundred dollar book. Just that one well, book. I really want that book. But so. you paid five hundred. So I did. So I got. I don't some think you're a good businessman. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a great business. We've only been doing it since like 1989. I can bring my stuff into you and walk out with hundreds of dollars? I've paid... Not in cash, so don't come and rob over him. He doesn't have cash. Over $100,000 in comics purchased uh, by the end of the year. Oh my goodness. So. You are rich. So. I need a loan. <laughs> Will you... Give me a grant. Oh, we give me a great. grant. Give me a grant. Oh, I'll give you a grant. Okay. I'll grant you the uh, ability to pick the next topic on Geek Storm. Unfortunately, our first topic is always our worst topic because oh. it's when somebody passes. We don't always talk about things like that, but when it's somebody that, that we all know it's in the geek world, whatever. And this one, I really like this actress. Her name is uh, Una Stubbs. Una. And uh, she has. Um, she was 86 years old. Passed away, yes. I believe, yesterday or the day before, and uh, has like 100 and. 62 uh, acting credits for her name. Most of them are in, like, on the BBC and in, and in Great British Britain. British actress. Yes. Um, most people in modern times would know her from uh, the TV show Sherlock on the on BBC One. One of my favorite TV shows of all time in my top ten Ms. easily. Hudson. She's Miss Hudson. And uh, just, just great. She was amazing in that role. And I have, I'll be honest, I've not seen many other Miss Hudsons, but she was a character okay. I really, really liked. Just up until a year or two ago, she was appearing on the BBC... Uh, kids show called The Worst Witch where she was still acting oh. and she was actually playing an elderly witch mm. and they did some age gags and mm -hmm. things like that with her where she played a character called Miss Bat. Mm -hmm. So when you put it up there I'm like I think that's Miss Bat. Mm -hmm. and so, yeah. But because her career has been so long the pictures they're showing of course yeah. were her as a much younger woman. She did black where, and white stuff so yeah. it's, it's not like Whereas she's been around. The stuff I've known she was in her 80s right. when she was doing this right. role so right. I had to but she was a lot of fun, great character, and uh, she was not on the last season. So it makes me wonder if maybe the health has been declining for a little while. There's a scene in Sherlock where she tears into Mycroft, and it's, it gives me chills. Yeah. She's amazing. I don't like skinny Mycroft. That's about the only thing they did. Well, he, they he created the show, so he gets to put himself so in there. <laughs> you know what? If you're the showrunner for uh, <clears throat> Jeopardy, you yeah. can do pretty much the I same guess thing. that's true. And then, boy, did LeVar Burton find that out. You know, Ooh. people like, you know... 
I don't think I don't think the people. Well, when you Alex Trebek has passed away. When you pick the guy, and they had to pick a new host for Jeopardy. Right. They have done months of right. having guest hosts right. with us now waiting to see who is, is it going to be Ken right. Jennings? Right. A big swell for LeVar Burden. All these names are out there. Um, football dude throws a ball. He got a shot at it. To be, put it in perspective, cool it would be like when you inevitably pass away oh, yeah. at, by an, at an early like age. Three weeks. Mike gets to decide who is the new host, okay? And he says, hmm, I think I'm probably the best candidate. He's clearly not the best candidate. And I don't mean that as a personal slight, Mike, because you're... You, you're passable, but he's clearly not the best candidate. So you have fan favorites. People would say, "Oh, I want, I want Mike, I this want, Mike. I want April back, <laughs> right? Or I want, I want April, Lauren. right? Yes, give me Mary, that Nick Gray guy. Any of those, any of those, any of those, except for me being obviously the one choice. Then, but then you go ahead and put yourself in there anyway, Mike Dukes. Why would you do that, Mike? You're setting yourself up for failure. You're going to put a show in decline that's already giving people a jumping off point anyway. Why? <laughs> So, yes, uh, the guy, now he did do a stint as a guest host. Sure. He didn't just show, but it turns out he was the one that was kind of in charge of the whole thing to begin with. Yes. And then, yeah, you know what? It's probably best I keep the job. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of disappointed people, and I'm sure there's disappointed people for all the, the guys they were gearing for. I would like to have seen LeVar Burton get uh, a little bit longer run to do it. But, I would almost say that we might still know. see LeVar. I'm, I'm a, that maybe in declining ratings or something, sure. they maybe might do it. All because, of a sudden. Because uh, Maya Bialik, if that's how you say her name, she's only going to be doing the evening specials. shows. Specials and things like that. So yeah. um, he's going to be doing the, the regular I'm, daytime I'm show. I'm guessing they're bringing her in for like the Celebrity Jeopardy. Probably. And maybe the College Jeopardy. Probably. All those themed ones they do, maybe right. they're bringing her in for that kind of right, stuff. Right, so. Right. Hopefully she's fun. I didn't get to see her guest stint, so hopefully it goes well. Um, likable characters, uh, you know, like likable person, sure. personality, yeah. and all that. Not that you get to do a whole lot, but right. you know, Alex Trebek did held that job down for like thirty plus years. <laughs> all the years it was so. Um, Trebek. It was when he got rid of the mustache that I questioned Jeopardy. I'm like, what <laughs> are you thinking? That is insane. Whatever. So. All right. What do you say? You had some things on your mind. What do you want to talk about? You, you got... I told you I was a little ranty. Before we get to that, so... you know, uh, What If just came out yesterday, oh, okay? That's good. And um, I really enjoyed it. Did you see it? I love We, You know, usually I put stuff off. Sure. I got up first thing in the morning. Oh, wow. Got my wife in the room. We watched it mm -hmm. before I came to work. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Good, good. Is that because something. you knew people would want to talk about it at the store? No, I, I wanted to see it. Okay, cool. Sean wanted cool. to see it. And if you don't know, it, we've talked about it before, but What If is a new show on Disney+, Plus, which supposes what if this one little aspect of this one story in the MCU changed, what would be the resulting uh, story? And uh, in this case, we took uh, What If uh, Steve Rogers hadn't been the one to get the Super Soldier Serum, but instead it was Peggy Carter. And uh, we, we told a pretty different story. I saw some complaints online that it was too by the book of what we already saw with, with, uh, with that first Cat movie, but I, I feel like it... it after that initial churn, it really took a it really took a different uh, tack. It's a 30 minute animated uh, situation with many of the voice actors from the original, not all, but virtually I could not tell the difference between the voice actors. The guy who did Chris Evans was great. He was superb. So, um, what if is based on a comic book series that started in the late 70s mm -hmm. and has had uh, at least two long run incarnations mm -hmm. as well as specials and things like that. And what it typically does is exactly what they did. You start off with the basic premise explained, mm -hmm. and then you see the twist. And then after that, some of the points are always going to line up, and that's what they did with the show. But then we saw enough differences right. that I thought it made it interesting. Mm -hmm. I've heard some complaints about the animation, because some people don't like the, the cell shading aspect. I thought that animation was, um, oh, it was beautiful. just blended so well. Yeah. Looked really good. It was incredibly engrossing. I thought the story was well done. The voice acting was top notch. The twists were great. Um, it does make me wonder: Are they going to somehow do a what if version of the Avengers because of the twist at the end? There's a. So I think there is a. Well, one of the one of the preview shots that we saw was a, a decimated New York. So I would imagine that we are going to see something so, like that. That could be interesting. Yeah. I liked it. I don't see why. I've had a couple people, you know. You can't please everybody. That's no. just uh, that's the way it is. I like chocolate ice cream. Some people like the vanilla ice cream, and right. that's fine. But uh, so, but for me personally, it gave it was it was my favorite Disney Plus uh, Marvel project yet because really? it gave me in one episode a concise, complete story. WandaVision's great. 
Captain America, Bucky, Falcon, whatever you want to call it, that's great. Loki was great. But all those built over hours of television. Sometimes the payoff was worth it. Sometimes it wasn't. You had to decide. But you had to go through that whole process to get that payoff. Speaking of that, there and is there is talk if, that maybe these what-ifs might also be interconnected. Besides just being this, what if this happened? What if this happened? What if this multiverse? Whatever. But because, and the thing, one of the things that I, that lends towards that is we didn't really, see, we heard the Watcher. He yeah. told a little bit about himself, but not much. But you didn't really get a good shot of him at all. No. I feel like I feel like he's going to be revealed. He, he the character, sure, sure. is going to be revealed slowly, slowly over the course of the 10 episodes yeah. or so. But anyway. If anyway, they enjoy. do connect him up, I, I'm all for it. But there was nothing about the episode yeah. that had to be. I no. got a complete story, and at the yes. end, I was satisfied. Yes. It was like a really good meal. It all came together, even with the dessert. Perfect. I loved it. Big big thumbs up. I like that the uh, I like that the relationship between Steve and Peggy was kind of a multiversal constant. You know, this is this is what happened here, and this is they still were that way there. And and to see to see her still attracted and and wanting to be with Steve, even though he wasn't even though he wasn't the, Cap, yeah. that lends a lot towards that physical perfect specimen. Yeah, how how we were hoping anyway, how we wanted her to feel towards him when he did get it as well, you know, how she was kind of, you know, not flirty with him, but, but was cool to him in the back of that, in the back of that car on the way to get the shot and all that. She was, she treated him like a guy, not like an experimenter, not like a, you know, I'm just along for the ride, that type of thing. So I really enjoyed it. Good, was good. Watch Captain America, the movie, first Avenger, watch the what if, yeah. put them together. That'd yeah. be a great little. And there's a great, uh, the, the big, the villain at the end of this is from out of nowhere. And, and uh, uh, if you don't know who it is, then. Uh, I'll tell you if you ask me, but it's uh, it was really good. It was good. Yeah. I've heard it's the Doctor Strange uh, character. Shuma Garath is who yeah. it is. Yeah. All right. So Multi multi dimensional. And, and there's a chance we're seeing him in the new Doctor Strange movie. Yes, I imagine we so probably not Cthulhu, we probably As much as people want to think that as it wasn't. Cthulhu. What do you think about conventions? Your convention's coming up. The Kogamo Con. The Kogamo Con is coming up August twenty first. We've got uh, Dwayne Cameron, who is the Mercury Power Ranger. Oh. Mercury Ranger is going to be in there. We're going to have the original Batmobile. Gavin Smith, who just had a new book come out this week called Dead Legends, as well as being named the penciler on the brand new Star Trek The Next Generation book. Nice. Stuart Sager is going to be there. Just had a brand new Kiss book, Kiss Number 1, come out this week. He's going to be there. He was a cover artist for that book. Wow. So a lot of great stuff going on. Kokomo Event Center? Kokomo Event and Conference Center, uh, Saturday, August 21st, 10 a.m. till 5 p.m., the last one at that facility, it is becoming a commercial leasing uh, property of some sort. Right. They're just not going to hold events there anymore. Mm -hmm. Still owned by the same people, still in the same hands, but unfortunately, we, we won't be able to have the Kokomo Con there anymore. How much are so. tickets at the door? $10. $10 to get in, $10. which is cheap for, for a convention. Absolutely. And you can buy them at the store or no? We cannot buy them at the store this year. Okay. You're so. trying to keep it all, because it's of COVID and everything else. Sure, that makes You're sense. trying to keep it all contained, one spot. People don't have to go out of their way. It'll all be available there. And it'll be good to go. It should be a good time. So uh, you you had your date changed, moved up a little bit, which yes. I which we I think we both think is probably a good thing because we're going to go through some more major changes with COVID and and other conventions that took your spot. It did uh, not only are there going to be a, a couple, two or three uh, big conventions at the same time, but we're not. I don't think we're far away from from maybe possibly getting those knocked out of, of a schedule. So every major convention in the United States shifted all of their events to. Fourth quarter, um, fall area, things that are usually in late winter slash early spring moved. They've all moved. And uh, now all of a sudden, like Gen Con moved, Origins moved. I've got, you know, bet on the table that Origins gets canceled. I got to bet that uh, Gen Con gets canceled, at least in the physical form of us all going. Mm -hmm. They've already, with Gen Con, moved it into late September, mid right. to late September, when it's usually in late July, mm. but on top of that, they've already put back a mask mandate. So at first there was no mask. Right. When they finally started selling tickets again, there was gonna be no mask. Now you've already bought your tickets. It's it's like a month away. Right. And now the masks are back on the table. Right. Which is, it makes sense, but there's some people who didn't agree to that. That wasn't on the table for them. Yeah. Now that it's kind of been like, oh, now this is the change. I think so. it will be a worse I think what would be worse for the convention conventions than the mass mandate, because I think that's more of a thing where people are, are starting to come around a little sure. bit on it anyway, is whether or not there's a um, an attendance cap Capacity. of some kind. Yeah, that that's yeah. gonna be that's gonna be a real killer if they that's, say only half, or if they say you know uh, tables can't be as close together, that type of stuff. Who know, who knows? But that's that's always possible. Gen Con had already limited their capacity to about fifty percent. Right. And other cons. I mean, some of this is just natural. Some right. people don't feel comfortable going right. 
to these things. So yeah. that's going to help um, with that. Kogamu Khan is only expecting about probably 750 people this year mm -hmm. compared to its normal 12 to 1500 people mm -hmm. because of this. Now, on the other hand, a lot of people are bored. School is going to be back in session just long enough. Family's going to want to go out and do something. Right. So, but we're going to be, uh, you know, we'll be monitoring it and watching it up until the day of the show. Right. Because, you know, if the, if the state says you got to wear a mask or if there's got to be capacity, right. something like that, uh, it, we're in a position to handle capacity and uh, we're in a position to handle vendor sure. space at right. this point. Right. We purposely undersold our convention space so that we could spread it out if need be. Right. It wasn't financially a great decision, but it was the only thing that made sense logically sure. if we were gonna have this happen. We can't tell people who've paid us already, hey, by the way, we know you saved that date for months, you right. can't come to the show now. So this will, you know. Okay, you wanna talk off. about some stuff. Uh, you said you gotta get some stuff off your mm -hmm. chat, do a little rant and go right ahead. Are you gonna loosen me? What do you mean? Is there a football? I don't know what you're talking about. All right, here I go. Hey, you've been to Cal Galaxy's Edge, See? right? I knew it. I knew it. What do you think about this stuff? Craig the six thousand dollars, Mr. Van Pelt. Six thousand dollars. <laughs> Give me fifteen cents. Six thousand dollars <laughs> for this LARP experience you're going to get at Galaxy's Edge, where you go in and you're in the thing, and you right. are. So they treat you, and they everybody's in character, and the staff. Disney and has they cut your hand created off, but, a what? new hotel. Okay. And it is a based on the idea of it is themed as a star cruiser, mm -hmm. basically a cruise put into space, but it is an all-encompassing experience. So when you arrive, you'll actually get on the shuttle, which will take you up to mm -hmm. the uh, cruiser. Mm -hmm. Now, they've had to already tell people it doesn't really go into space. Mm -hmm. People, I guess there's somebody must have thought you're really going into outer space. Okay. And then the idea is it will be a fully immersive experience. For two nights, you don't have to leave if you don't want to. There is an, ex a, an exhibition. Um, there's an expedition to go to um, Galaxy's Edge. That was, uh, what is the name of it? Galaxy's Edge. No, no, no. The name of it's it's got a name. Like that city has got a name. Oh. Uh, that, you're going there. You're not going Batu? to Galaxy's Edge. Uh, yes, you're Batu? going to Batu. Okay. So for six thousand dollars, a family of four mm -hmm. is going to be able to do this experience. Right. They will have all of their meals included. All of their non-alcoholic <laughs> drinks included, their tickets to Hollywood Studios, which is where Batu and got that is. Mm -hmm. You will also get other perks, I'm sure, as well. So whereas people are freaking out about this and saying it's a six thousand dollar experience, right. as somebody who's uh, you know going to be taking their wife to Disney to one of the more sure. you know bigger things, uh -huh. that that's not. That's not crazy. I mean, Junior, you, you, you said family of four, which when you split yeah. it four ways, if Junior can come across with 1500 bucks, you probably can. So why not, you know, everybody just chip in and do it, right? I don't, I, I don't think I'll do it. I, I don't, I've been to Disney enough to know that $1,500 for two nights for what they're saying mm -hmm. is well within reason for mm -hmm. what you would pay to stay two nights at one of their premier lodges anyway. Mm -hmm. You're going to pay just to stay at one of their nicer places, mm -hmm. seven, eight, a thousand dollars. Just like anything else. Just for one night. If, to, if not enough people do it, they'll drop the price. If, oh, if, absolutely. If not, any other uh, early, Don't expect early, that price to come down for two years. Early the adopter, other thing is, is right. it's, when we say limited, and that's part of my rant that we'll get to, uh, even if we have to go long, uh, is this thing only holds like a hundred rooms. Uh -huh. This hotel right, only right, has a hundred rooms. Right. So, there's only going to be a hundred people able to do a two-day experience. Uh -huh. So 160, you know, times a year basically. Sure, I understand. You're going to be able to do this. Right. And out of that, only hundred people. So, uh, well, hundred rooms times four people. Blah blah blah. So, uh, plus is where you're going to see the new uh, lightsaber technology. The actual oh, yeah. retracting yeah, yeah. technology is going to be there. Uh, you're going to be able to fully cosplay. In the facility right now, I mean, the, the the geeky questions really aren't, aren't about this money. If you're a geek, you've spent some stupid money on yes. some stupid things over, over Guilty. The time. So yeah, I don't. People are complaining about that. Whatever. Save up your pennies and go do what you want to do. <laughs> but there's a rule about Galaxy's Edge slash Batu that you can't cosplay right. on Batu. You can do something called uh, bounding, right. where you take a normal outfit and you make it look Star Wars light. Right. Like a, a woman might do like the buns on her head right. with a white 
uh, shirt or something to kind of do a Leia thing. But it has to be a shirt. It can't, a be, it can't be a Leia costume. It can't be a costume. You can't go in costume. You can go and make up something that looks similar. Yeah. They don't as. want you to go and act a fool in a pro property that they own on a property that they you own. You can't be confused with a real character right. or they're going to do right. something about it. But Why now, is Obi-Wan smoking? Yes, that? but... <laughs> Uh, well, he'd be vaping now, probably. Sorry, right. Right. Uh, you can't do that either on Disney. Um, but again, you can cosplay on the liner. I know why Anakin so is now smoking. You're going to shuttle down to the planet, mm. and supposedly there's going to be some special times where mm. I'm going to guess you're going to get an hour before mm -hmm. the rest of the people um, do. And if they do that, then I could see <clears> them allowing you to cosplay mm -hmm. in Batu, mm -hmm. which would be another huge up, especially for cosplayers. Sure. Who want to be able to get their full gear on, and you know some guys, yeah, and I think some it's, women, I think it's a bad idea. Who would put on some real gear to just go get pictures in front of yeah. the the you know Millennium Falcon yeah. in that gear, right? So the more lifelike you can make a picture, the better it's going to sure. be for people. I sure. don't know. I don't think the number is crazy. I think it's it's high, but I think it's one of those things you have to make it high on purpose to limit yes the amount of people because there's only so many spots. Right. But for a year or two, mm -hmm. it's not going to matter because it'll be booked up forever, so. Okay, since you're already there, go ahead and segue into your, what do you want to talk All about? All right, so what's going on is that uh, Image Comics is putting out a new book from Todd McFarlane called King Spawn. Comics have been in a huge uptake lately, but. New issues also? Uh, new issues have been on an uptake okay. um, lately. Okay. But this book is now slated at 497,000 copies. Ordered? Pre-ordered. Pre wow. By the time we get to final orders, that will get to half a million. Sure. That's a guarantee at this point, willing to put money on it. Now, the thing here is, this is where I get ranty because it upsets me. I'm watching for the first time, because of this, I watch several YouTube channels. And the reason that we're seeing, there's a lot of reasons that we're seeing upticks in comic sales and Lego sales and toy sales and card sales and stamp sales and all kinds of other weird collectibles. But YouTube has had a major uh, push and is has got some responsibility in helping drive this market upward, which in some cases is awesome. It's great for everybody. But they don't recognize that they've become the new Wizard Magazine, the new Hero Magazine, and the new Exploitation Magazine, Exploitation Magazine. Oh, so close. That's really pushing things in a silly direction. So I'm watching these things yesterday, and I've got YouTuber after YouTuber after YouTuber just losing their stuff about how amazing that this is and how it's the best thing that's ever happened to the industry mm. and how it couldn't be better. This is a sign for indie creators and all this other stuff. I have been in the comic business since I was a child. I have been professionally in the business since I was in high school. I'm about to have my 49th birthday and there are six months in my lifetime where I have worked that has not been directly in the comic book industry. What did you do? I did inventory for oh, retail right. grocery inventory specialist for a minute. So, um, with all that said, this giant uptick has been great, but I have lived long enough and have actually seen these trends happen before. And here's the situation. Spawn on a good day sells, if it's lucky, 50,000 copies. And I'm going to be honest, that's an incredibly generous number. And in your store, it's about two, two or three copies? I sell 12 copies of Spawn with one guy buying one, I'm sorry, two or three of each copy. Okay. I might have 11 subscribers to Spawn. Now my store is a small store. Right. It is a small sample, but I think it is an accurate sample of realistic sales, even if you take a store four times my size, sure. then four times that Proportion. number. So, 50,000 copies, again, being generous. I tried to look up numbers, I couldn't give them exactly, but I can tell you I feel very confident betting Mike's life on the fact that book doesn't sell $50,000 kind of on a regular. So, to then go up to 500,000 copies means that the landfill is about to get some comic books. This is the ET for your Atari 2600. That's exactly what's gonna happen. And what is driving this sale is very, very simple. There is a 250 copy variant. And what that means is to get this one copy of a book, you have to order 250 copies of the other books to get this one. This one book will be signed by Todd McFarlane and come with a CGC code that will help get it graded for no additional cost. Now, the one rumor I had read was that it was gonna be a 9.8, which is about the highest grade you can possibly get from CGC. 
Except when really looking into it, I couldn't actually find where that was a guarantee. In fact, I couldn't find anything about any of the guarantees other than the will include a certificate of authenticity that will be signed by Todd McFarlane and a representative of CGC, the Certified Grading Comic Book Service, Worthless. to uh, make sure that it's an authentic signature. Normally, you'd have to pay extra for that as well. And then you will get your book with the certificate and be able to send the book in with the certificate and then CGC will verify that signature. But again, that still doesn't guarantee that you will get this grade. The point being is if a normal spawn sells you know, 12 copies, 50,000 units per month, who's absorbing all of this 500,000 copies? And again, with you having to order 250 copies to get this one variant, this one variant might be worth X amount of dollars. They're saying it's ultra limited, except now ultra limited is the definition that we have to define in society. I say it's not ultra limited. Saying, calling them a liar is a bit rough. I won't call them a liar. We'll say they're exaggerated because doing the math is very simple. 250 copies divided by 500,000 means there's 2,000 copies. If, if. Now that's not 100% true either. Right because not everybody ordered the 250 because it's all um, accumulated together in one pie. But many people to get that high obviously ordered 250 to 500 copies to get this book, where stores like me ordered 15. But point being is that the actual King Spawn number one is so overprinted that there are literally going to be copies sitting in boxes that no one will ever touch. They will simply be picked up bulk style and moved around, right. given away, given to charities, given to school. Actually, I don't know if schools accept them. But we're seeing more and more and more of this. So when uh, people in the know talk about, you know, there's an impeding crash, it's coming soon, this crash is going to happen. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. My money is on, it does. And if we're going to look at a couple of books that are the uh, thing that set off the thing, the fuse, I'm going to say it right here so it's live, Skybound 10 and Spawn, King Spawn. These are the two books that I'm going to point out right now. These are the two, if I've got to point at something, these are going to lead to the downfall. Because here's the beautiful thing about King Spawn. Welcome to Toys and it's not returnable. Please let us know if you need help with Berserker number one came out and sold a lot of copies. Sure. But that was based on the gimmick that... Keanu Reeves would sign a variant copy for every 1,000 copies you ordered, except they made it returnable. So a store could order 1,000 copies, get their special one, sell it for a ton of money, and then send 900 back and get all their money back. They have to sit on that for a while, but eventually they would be able to get it. So if you can invest that money and mm -hmm. wait out that time, right. you get your money back. Mm -hmm. With Spawn, at 500,000 copies, a $6 book, there's no return privileges. So whatever he sells, Todd's, Todd's making Todd, Todd McFarlane's about to make half a million dollars, bare minimum, on this deal. So that's great for him. And it's great for collectors who want to buy it and want to be excited about it. I don't want to take the wind out of anybody's sales. But if you're watching a YouTube thing and they're telling you that this is an investment, that this has potential, that this helps the industry, don't believe those people. They are selling you a bill of goods that's a lie. I don't know why they would do it. Maybe they're naive. Maybe they don't understand economics. Maybe they don't like comic books. I don't know what the real deal is. But I am far from an expert on a lot of things, but I know a little something about this. And I can tell you that King Spawn, 20 years from now, is going to be in the equivalent of the dollar bins. Except for this one ultra-limited <laughs> copy that will have at least 1,000 of those out there. For example, when uh, when Spawn 1 first came out. It was like around it, a million. It was more like 1.5 million 1. copies. 1.5 million. So that's a lot. Three times as many copies, but still, that's still a lot. When you get to 500,000 to 1.5 million, you're still you're, you're, you're in the same ballpark as far as you and I are concerned. Uh, but those books now go for 20, 25 bucks. You can you can buy a Spawn number one for a decent one anyway. Maybe not 9.8, but up, a decent one. Up until the pandemic and we saw this huge spike, you yeah. could have bought a Spawn number one for $5 five dollars less. Five bucks, right, right. All day long. You right. could have found Spawn number ones in a dollar bet. Yes. Up until the spike. Now we've seen this happened. Um, that's the thing that killed that killed collectibles, in, uh, especially comics in the in the in the 90s was absolutely. was the glut. Uh, yeah, this is a brand new special number one collector's item, first issue. Says it right on the cover, so it must be true. But they made a million of them, so if there's a million of a thing, it's not quite as valuable because everybody who po might possibly want one has one. What? How much is yours worth now? 
So that's what you're saying. Yeah. So keep keep that in mind. And to just give this a little further clarification, when they relaunched Batman, mm -hmm. it was like 200,000 copies because there was no super crazy gimmick right. like this. Right. Batman. Right. Now, I'm not saying that we don't all know who Spawn is, but there's a lot of people out there who don't mm, know who Spawn is. Most people don't know But if we compare is. Spawn to Batman yeah. across the thing, 200,000 for a number one for the first time in years versus yeah. Spawn. So, yeah. Um, so I'm a little ranty about it. I'm a little salty because I think that there are some bad faith actors involved now coming through YouTube. I think that some of these guys, um, one, they just want views. They want clicks and they, get, and they get paid for it. So hey, it's their job, whatever. Some of these guys I think are small enough, they just want to be recognized. They want to walk into a comic show. Hey, that's so-and-so of the blah and they right. told me whatever. It happens to me all the time. You know? Huh. Um, so just, as I said, if you want to watch these things, you want to get your information from them, that's absolutely fine. But keep in mind what they're telling you, because some of them don't have the right information. They're misleading you, or they're, at worst, lying to you. At best, they're just naive. Either way, you should be checking out GeekStorm for opinions that will happily force <laughs> down to your face at all occasions. Till next time, be groovy, everybody.